Hello everyone, here we are again with another project. We're going to do an axis deer. The form that you're seeing in the video here is uh, actually um, a wall pedestal shoulder mount, but I'm going to use it as a stationary type of a mount as a part of a full floor pedestal. You will see what I mean when the project is over. <clears throat> I'll have the picture at the end of the video. So I didn't go through the um, roughening up the, um, the foam part and uh, basically creating the uh, lips and nose cutting and grouting. I didn't. I skipped through that part because you can see it through my uh, other videos. So right now we are applying the height paste all around the neck area only, so we can slide the short incision height or cape that we have. Uh, slowly on it. This uh, this animal was was hunted in United States and brought back into Canada. So they did a really good job in skinning it. Uh, the short incision worked really good on it, and uh, I have test fitted the animal so it fits perfectly uh, like a glove. So as you can see, I'm wrapping my plastic around the face because I don't put glue on there. The plastic makes it slippery to slide the short incision um, cape all over the neck. The reason I decided to go with a wall pedestal on this floor pedestal is just this particular form has a large enough on the back side show, so it shows a lot of those beautiful spots that Axis Deer is known for. I, uh, I thought you know this, this would be a better way of taking advantage of the height that we have, at least to show. They don't really have much of an antler, uh, but uh, the height is pretty beautiful on them. So again, I'm going to fast forward pretty quick in some areas and slow down in some other areas. But one of the areas that I wanted to show you is adjusting the skull plate for top of the form. Um, it, by pushing your finger right on the forehead, uh, you will realize that if the uh, if you need to add any piece of wood underneath it like this or if it's too much right now or should we use a thinner one so now I decided to go with a thinner one here you can see that it looks pretty smooth transition right there so I realized that this is the right thickness <clears throat> to make it easier to work I like to cut it in shape and uh, with a couple of brat nail hold it there so it doesn't move on me and um, with a couple of screws that uh, that I've made the holes pre-hand I just attach it on top of the skull but the way I like to do it is just I put all the screws in but not totally tight so it gives me the final approach for final adjustment because still it can move on you while you're screwing it down so I usually like to put the center one in, in place. As you can see, it's not really cinched down. I put more and more and more. I usually put five, two front, one in the middle, and two in the back. So basically, I finally adjust it and I tighten them all up at the same time, a little bit on each, so that uh, presses it down. And if I need to do any adjustment, that's the time to do it. So that's how I adjust the skull plate. And uh, pretty quick, we're gonna go over the mache work around the skull plate to make it uh, uh, as uh, smooth as possible. So once again, um, this mache that I'm using is made out of plaster Paris, paper pulp, and a little bit of a dextrin. Even if you don't put in dextrin, it still works. Now it's time to carve it out. It dries fairly quick within, I would say, 10 minutes or 15 minutes is fairly dry. Uh, not, not dry, but it's kind of like set, so you can uh, you can start carving around the antlers and the burrs easily. Mm -hmm. 
Now we're uh, doing the final smoothing before we move on to setting the eyes and the clay work. If you notice on the form, Axis Deer seem to have a very large tear duck. And uh, we, will, we will continue the same method that we've done on all deer, all other deers, and uh, we'll do the same thing in here too. With a little bit of a clay behind the, behind the eyes, you push them into the eye socket. If it needs some more, you can easily apply some more. Not necessarily these forms are coming with 100% identical uh, or symmetrical eye sockets. They're, they're usually good, but you have to still check on them. So if it needs any adjustment, you need to you need to do that. Of course, it seems to be quite level to the ground, but I'm not sure if I can see they're up and down or not, which by using a little um, level tool, you can figure out if one needs to go higher or lower to make sure that uh, they're, they're perfectly level to the ground. So on the right eye, because it's not in the video, it's not in the camera view, I'll go fast and I'll slow down on the left eye that you can see better. So again, I start by filling out the gap between the eye and form. I just don't like that um, gap sitting in there. And if So if I want to do my clay work, I don't like any air to be underneath my clay work. So you get yourself a small roll and start building up the eyelids. So in those areas, if you feel that there is uh, not enough clay or too much clay, you can easily push it around or use your spatula and remove some or move some. Bring it to the amount that you think is as close as possible to your reference photo. As I mentioned before in my previous videos, while you're pulling the skin over the face, some of these clay work might just move around or you push the clay around. There's nothing to worry about because you can still um, bring them back and shape it up properly when you have the skin on it. Even if it's a little bit out of line, you can still use the skin, push the clay with it and bring it back to the normal a natural position that you had it before. A little roll of clay underneath the eye will create our lower eyelid muscle. Yeah, here I felt that I need to put some more Yeah, Axis Deer is not an animal that I get to do a lot quite often so um, it might take me a couple of times going back and forth through my reference photo and the form to figure out that if I'm if I'm doing it the right way or not obviously if I would have gotten it more and more it would become a little bit more um, I could have memorized a lot more and using 
um, less reference. Yeah, the tear ducts seem to be too big. Like I was a little bit surprised when I saw it. So surprisingly, by the time mount is done, uh, when you stand back, you don't see that tear duct sticking out that much. It shows that much on the form. And when we add a little bit of clay to it, it gets even bigger. But when the mount is done, and if you stand 10, 15 feet away, you don't really see that. It kind of like blends in into the whole shape of the animal. It's quite surprising. So again, uh, this video was getting too long. I'm going to um, make it into two segments. And the first segment is coming up to, to an end fairly quick right now after uh, we're done with the claying the, the claying up the face and then the second segment will will mount the animal so just a thin layer in front of the nose gives you the ability to create a smooth nose surface when the skin is over it this is like eighth of an inch thickness is not that thick just to give yourself a little bit of a clay surface to work instead of a hard rigid foam Anyway, the video is coming to an end in a few seconds. I'll invite you to the video number two for the rest of the work. Thanks for watching.